remember when, back in 2009, early 2010, I started to get into Mail CU. Unfortunately, back then, there weren't many ways for overseas Mail CU fans to actually get to know more about their favorites. Thus, I found myself reading Wikipedia pages, checking Tumblr blogs in search of cool stories or snippets of events. There was some content out there that few fans of Mail CU managed to provide us. At the same time, in 2010, there were very few ways to support MailCU legally. Nowadays, CU magazines are a click away on Amazon Japan. MailCU music is released on streaming platforms worldwide. They hold live streams on YouTube that aren't region locked. They are releasing complete footage from some of their live DVDs and Blu-rays. It is crazy. So now, you can support your favorite Mil CU in the most varied ways. And all free and legally. I'll tell you all about it in this episode of CU Lounge. Welcome to CU Lounge. I am your host, Vanessa, and today's topic is how to support Mail CU legally. It is pretty interesting to look back and see just how much has changed for Mail CU fans and, at the same time, Mail CU themselves. Streaming media, YouTube, live viewing events, digital magazine releases are just some of the new things that have changed the game for everyone. So, Nowadays, there is no excuse for piracy. No excuse. Even if you're a student and you don't have your own money, even if you're not well off, like basically the wide majority of us aren't, there is no excuse to browse those illegal download websites, claiming that you don't have money to support your favorites. Nowadays, everyone can support their favorites. All you need is an internet connection. So I decided to compile a couple of free and legal things you can do to support your favorite Mail CU. You can find more about those on the hand that feeds HQ's original feature, the ultimate entertainment guide for Mail CU fans. I will leave a link for that article in the description below if you're on YouTube, so make sure to check it out. Bear in mind that this episode isn't by any means exhaustive and I am not sponsored by any of the companies and games that will be mentioned in this episode. For reference, I will be talking about YouTube channels, radio and drama CDs, reading, music, anime and games, and as a bonus, and this one might get a bit outdated couple of months since this recording, live shows. So let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. On average, a person consumes around 4 hours of video content every day. And due to the fact that 2020 has been a hectic year, most of you decided to kick off their YouTube channels. And thus, we're watching even more video content than ever before. Now, this is something that I would have never thought would end up being a trend. At least, not this fast. Most of you, just like most of us, are foodies, gamers, complete dorks and nerds for the things they love. And on their own YouTube channels, they have the freedom of doing something, for a change, that is not scripted. I will suggest one must follow YouTube channel and two honorable mentions that are on my favorites to avoid making this episode too cumbersome. Remember that these are my personal opinions and you're welcome to check out the full list that is in the link in the description below. If I am missing any YouTube channel by Mail CU, it might happen, please let me know in the comments on YouTube and I'll update the article accordingly. Now, if you're into gaming, there is one YouTube channel that is a must follow. I'm talking about Natsuki Hanae's official YouTube channel. Natsuki Hanae has been for a long time on the platform and he is considerably well succeeded there. To add to the fact that he is already pretty successful as a voice actor. 
Hanai has a gaming channel and is really, really quirky and funny in his playthrough videos. Over the years, as he got more popular as a YouTuber, he started to bring in fellow male CU as his guests. Some of the names include Kensho Ono, or as most of the fans know as Kensho Ono, Soma Saito, Takuya Iguchi, Yuma Uchida, Yoshiki Nakajima and many, many more big and popular names in the industry. Plenty of funny content can be found there, so make sure to check his channel out. It's a must for any male CU fan or gamer. And if you're both, like myself, you'll have a whole lot of fun. The honorable mentions include Mamoru Miyano's Road to Living and Yusuke Shirai's Shiraimu channel. Mamo has only recently kicked off his YouTube show, although his YouTube channel is, as you might have expected, his artist YouTube channel, launched a couple of years ago by King Records. There is something about Miano that instantly makes any kind of variety show appearance a blast to watch. His natural charisma and his honest-to-god funny and easygoing personality make him one of the funniest guys in the CU industry. And that translates into his work on Road to Living. His pilot episode was hilarious, with him shamelessly promoting merchandise and then getting awkward about it, then his realization that maybe he should try his luck at being a YouTuber, and then the pineapple. Everything said there. If you want to have a blast and laugh until you're crying, then Mamoru Miyano's Road to Living is a must check. Then we have a channel that started off with the challenge overcome and now has turned into one of the most entertaining channels coming from a male CU. Yusuke Shirai's Shiraimo channel is filled with Shirai's quirkiness. From his pilot episode in which he went to present his plan to have a YouTube channel to his manager, with his manager basically being sassy throughout the meeting, to Shirai's homemade cola, to his competition to see who knows more about him among male CU, his channel is filled with funny and entertaining content. Shirai is in his element, hosting and creating content for his channel, making his fans get to know more about himself and his relationships with fellow male CU. He's also candid about it, even asking fellow male CU how they were dealing with the lockdown in Japan and how that had influenced their finances. He also dove into how to get into the CU industry with an insightful video that I thoroughly recommend you to check. Shiraimu channel is another recommendation of mine. Then we have the radio shows. While I would love to talk about Dear Girl Stories and Dameraji, two of my favorite radio shows, unfortunately those two aren't available for free on the web and there are no official sources on YouTube, so I'll pass on those. However, if you can listen to Japanese radio live, please do make sure to check those two radio shows out, or purchase the radio CDs if you want to. My three suggestions are Hosoyo Yoshimasa no Boku Dake no Mizoshiro Sekai, Hyoroto Danshi, and Shunichi Toki's Time With You. It is safe to say that any male CU radio show could be here, because let's be honest, CU have either gentle or resonant voices that fit pretty well with radio. Osoya Yoshimasa no Boku Dake no Mizoshiru Sekai is quite the unique radio show. He's into occult stuff and horror, often exploring stories within those themes and is quite open to overseas comments. At the same time, he engages with the listeners, making the episodes all the more engaging. This is a must-listen and, at times, view. A note that Yoshimasa released two episodes of his radio show as a viewable radio, and you can check those out. I'll link to those in the description below. Hyoro Todanshi is a really popular radio show co-hosted by two of the hottest talents in the CU industry. Kotaro Nishiyama and Yuichiro Umehara. This radio show, much like Tameraji, stems from the anime of the same name. It's a really funny show, one in which you can get a better insight on Umehara's personality and life, 
as usually goes on and on to talk about his life, straying a bit far from his quiet persona in events. You also have the sassy and witty comments by Nishiyama and the duo has a pretty good chemistry that makes the show flow pretty well. The third suggestion is Shunichi Taki's Time With You. I find this radio voice to be incredibly soothing and gentle. This is the kind of radio show meant to be listened to when you want to fall asleep, and you will, that I can assure you. The slow and gentle pacing of the show, together with Shunichi Taki's warm hosting, make it a must listen. If there is one thing that has been a trend as of late, is for male CU to release short reading videos. These essentially consist on a CU reading a story. The video might or might not be animated and seldom the CU show their face. My recommendations are Kosuke Toriyumi's Momotaro, Yuki Ono's Milky Way's Letter, Shito Onaosu Hoshi, Yuki Kaji's The Petit Prince, and Yuya Hirose's Jack and the Beanstalk. Kosuke Toriyumi has a classical narration voice, gentle yet filled with power and emotion, and you can notice those as he reads the traditional Japanese story, Momotaro. This is one of the few readings he's done on his YouTube channel, in which you can not only listen to his reading, but also watch him as he tackles the story, giving life to the setting and characters. Yuki Ono pulled off an amazing performance with Milky Way's letter, Shito Onao Suhoshi. The complete recording included Ono's close friends Soma Saito, Taku Yashiro and Makoto Furukawa and everything about it was done remotely and with such high quality in the recordings which is a fit in itself. Giving reading and acting directions remotely is not easy to pull off yet, once again Ono, that has been showing more of his creativity as of late, was able to pull off quite the amazing three-part story. Yuki Kaji revisited the classic story Le Petit Prince. Alongside Kaji's narration, you have illustrations, making this reading great if you have kids or younger siblings to whom you'd like to get into male CU and or the Japanese language. There's no going wrong with this story and Kaji has a fantastic narration session alongside fellow CU and his wife Ayana Taketats. And the final suggestion is yet another timeless children's story, Jack and the Beanstalk. Yuya Hiroze was in charge of the narration for this story, taking up to 20 minutes. Great chance for Hiroze's fans to check his vocal range as well. Next we have drama CDs. Stories coming to life through voice and some ambient sounds. How many stories have I listened to that made me laugh, cry, conflicted? Too many to count? Drama CDs are a great introduction to the Japanese language and serve as a great tool to learn the Japanese language itself as some vocabulary will repeat itself from CD to CD. I use drama CDs as a way for me to better understand spoken Japanese and it really is amazing how comfortable I am now when listening to Japanese. Of course, this does not give you fluency at the language, you still need to learn how to speak and write, but it is a great starting point just like how anime, dubbed in Japanese, is. Drama CDs are a gateway to beautiful stories and are one of the entertainment means in which we can focus entirely on what is CU's specialty, voice acting, as opposed to singing and being a YouTube personality, for example. Reject has vowed to release their entire catalog of drama CDs on YouTube as a measure to counter piracy. Reject is known for its controversial themes and crazy stories, but there are still some pearls in the mix. The Shinsegumi and the Dear Vocalist CDs are perfect examples of solid content the label has released. Unfortunately, the Dear Vocalist CDs are not uh, yet available, but some of the Shinsegumi CDs are already 
on their official YouTube channel. Make sure to check those out, of course, with headphones or in-ears, because those CDs were recorded using a dummy head mic, which is a 3D microphone that really takes you into those stories, making you no longer a bystander, but also a participant. Then we have music. This is that specific field in which Seiyu fans often tend to go all out with piracy. I went from having to pick which releases I really wanted for myself in order to save money, to actually having a lot of music available for streaming without paying a cent, while at the same time directly supporting my CU and the projects I have been reviewing since 2010. A note that the hand that feeds HQ doesn't support piracy and all reviews made are from actual copies that I own or that were lent to me for reviewing purposes. So, music is now available on streaming platforms for no extra fee. Of course, there are artists and labels that are still warming up to the idea of having their music released on streaming platforms even months after the release, which if it's the case with your favorite Mel Seiyu or to the Idol project, you'll have to wait a bit for them to completely warm up to the idea. Usually, music labels invest on the foreign market when they see an interest in their artists. That interest, of course, is noticeable whenever you purchase music from online stores such as CD Japan or Animate International. But right now, us, Mel fans, have a wide variety of music available to listen to on Spotify and Apple Music as two examples of streaming services. Remember, in 2010, if you wanted to listen to your favorite Mel CU's music, you had to purchase it, import the CDs, wait for those to arrive, in the meantime try to avoid spoilers, and only then listen to those CDs. Of course, if you went the legal way, which I am trying to put emphasis on. The Utapri, Idolish 7, Hanadol and Hypnosis Mike franchises have their entire catalogs available on Spotify. I'm talking about three of the most popular franchises in Japan and Hanadol, which is a, an amazing franchise with lots of unique music that only now is catching up on the popularity. When it comes to solo artists, Mamoru Miyano does have his entire catalogue available, including exclusive remix and live CDs, and for fans of the most successful solo acts with a CU background. Old Codex, You Make, Shotawai, Screen Mode, The Ready Project Groups and even B Project have their entire catalogues available there as well. Popular male CU, Soma Saito, Toshiki Masuda and Wataru Hatano, for example, only have a portion, in some cases only a couple of songs, available on Spotify. Unfortunately, no Kiramune artists have their music on Spotify, which is a pity. I look particularly forward to revisiting and supporting Tetsuya Kakihara, Miurino and Trigno currently my favorite acts in this label. Anime and games have been an outlet for people to get to know male CU or just CU in general. For those in the US, Funimation is a great option. Netflix is also a great option. YouTube already has some exclusive anime series. Best example is Idolish 7 spin-off series Vibrato. Also, check for your local legal anime platforms. Pick the one that fits best your needs, attention that all of these have their own catalogue of licensed anime series and some might be exclusive to one platform. Some have free trials, others let you watch everything for free for a period of time. Nowadays there are games for any type of smartphone gamer. Some suggestions of games licensed in English include Utano Prince Sama Shining Live. The game is licensed outside of Japan, so you have the game completely in English to play. There's no fully voiced story, so that's a, a drawback, but you have plenty of music to play. A3. This game is also licensed outside of Japan with its own English version. 
Mr. Love Queen's Choice. If you're into Otome games with a heavy focus on story and less on romance, this is a great pick. For gamers that don't spend in-game money, it is impossible to get some cards and side content, but if you're happy playing through the story, which is pretty awesome, and casually participating in, in the in-game events, then this is a great pick. It is available in English. If you game on the go and are familiar with the Japanese language, then these are some of the games that you can play for free, and some of those are my top recommendations. First off, we have Idolish 7. Undoubtedly the game with the best story out of all idol games. Idolish 7 focuses heavily on showing what lies behind all that glitter of the idol world. The struggles to be popular, coming to terms with issues in the past, with a lot of foreshadowing everywhere that comes to bite characters in their rear. The main story is fully voiced, so even if you don't understand kanji, katakana or iragana, you can still pick it up and understand some of the things that are happening. If you don't understand at all, there are awesome profiles on Twitter and Tumblr translating the story so that you don't miss a bit. Aside from that, the game is a pretty satisfying, yet at times challenging rhythm game feature that is used to drive the plot further. Kaikan Phrase Climax is a good choice if you want to have a look on what being a rockstar entails and, at the same time, if you're into risque mature content. Kaikan Phrase Climax takes inspiration on the classic Jose manga and turns it up a notch. There is no music to be played here, instead the main story is fully voiced and events are basically with you playing a board game to win important in-game items. Ensemble stars, basic and music. If you want idols but you don't want to have a challenging time like in Idolish 7, Ensemble Stars gives you two options. A card collecting game, in which you can follow a fully voiced main story and train your characters to participate in events. And on the other side, a really bland rhythm game experience that even those that are not very keen on rhythm games will find some level of enjoyment. However, if you like playing rhythm games, don't expect much rhythm here. It is highly recommended that you check the basic version before the music one, so that you can follow the story, as the music version does not have a story component at all. Stand My Heroes This is my go-to game whenever I have some time to spare and don't want to tire my fingers playing Idolish 7. Stand My Heroes has a mild romance component, with short stories for each character, some voiced and others not as well as a puzzle-solving feature that is similar to Bejeweled or Candy Crush, however more complex with their unique gimmicks. I'd suggest this game if you want to have a good time and not worry about story. Events are pretty chill and it is not hard to rank high for cards as people usually play this game rather casually. Lastly, and this is a recent uh, addition, I'm going to suggest Hypnosis Mike Alternative Rap Battle. This is a recent game stemming from the popular hip hop franchise Hypnosis Mike. The rhythm game part, although clunky at times, is rather enjoyable and the story is fully narrated. However, if you're not familiar with the franchise and its characters, some iterations might not have much logic to you, so I'd say it is not a newbie friendly game. Also, if you're a fan of the franchise, this is an alternative timeline, so it also doesn't match anything that you've read before, nor that you've listened to before. If you have some notions on the project or you just want to play cool hip-hop songs on a turntable, then this game has you covered. There are many, many more games, but these are a pretty good representation of the variety we currently have. To wrap up this episode, I explore a bit of the live shows that have been released or streamed in full on YouTube. This is a section that might not age that well, as some of the contents might be taken down in the future, we can never know. So if any of these shows that I'm going to mention are no longer available, 
have into account that this episode was recorded in August 2020. Grand Rodeo released their G12 and G13 shows on YouTube. Those are two of the best tours of theirs and are available in full and in HD on their official YouTube channel, so make sure to check those out. Screen Mode also live streamed the show of theirs earlier this year and still have it available on their YouTube channel. Idolish 7's Road to Infinity is available in a digest version on Banri's official YouTube channel. You can revisit the franchise iconic first live for free. Kazuki Kato revisited his special 10th anniversary live shows. You can find those on his official YouTube channel alongside some acoustic performances as well. Old Codex released several live performance videos of some of their most iconic songs, worth checking out for any fan of rock and punk rock music. Worth noting that Old Codex's shows are always overflowing with energy and are a blast to watch. Well, that was rather exhaustive, wasn't it? I hope this episode gave you an idea of all the MailCU content you have available and how you can support your favorites directly, yet without spending a cent. Of course, if you can, do purchase the physical releases and variety DVDs, but as it is, you can still support your favorites even if you're not well off. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did compiling this information for you. And remember, I only scratched the surface in this episode. More free and legal ways of supporting MailCU can be found on the Hand That Feeds HQ's Ultimate Entertainment Guide for MailCU Fans. So tell me, how have you been supporting your favorite MailCU? Do you have any suggestions for newcomers trying to support their favorites? Let me know in the comments below if you're on YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly MailCU and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of CU Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around. <laughs>